The question like this, what we're going to do is we're going to deal with the uh, we're going to deal with the with the uh, forces first. Okay, so we're going to draw a table. Now, how many pull? How many uh, weights is there? One or two? In this question, huh? Uh, what I mean by weights is how many weights are hanging off the edge of the table, more so. One, all right. So you have your, you have your uh, big weight in the middle here. Then we're gonna have our pulley system, like so, going all the way down, and then we're gonna hang a weight up there. Okay. So what we have here, guys, is uh, what weight is this one off the table? Anybody tell me? What weight is the one off the table? Three. Sorry. Three kilograms, okay. So it's at the ferry, it's basically at the pulley, isn't it? The first one. The reason why I know it's at the pulley on its way down, anybody tell me? It's about to fall down now. Any takers? It says that the length to the paragraph to the mass point three is the same length as it to the edge of the table, which means that it's using all its length to get to the particle, okay. Now, next thing is, uh, we undergo our usual system, all right? Tension pulls it upwards, weight pulls it downwards, okay? So, in a way, you're, you're sort of thinking of it being uh, just acting downwards. So, it's tension's acting upwards, and it's weight of 3G acting downwards, okay? So, what we're expecting to happen is a common acceleration A, a following on downwards. So, for the 3 kilogram mass, we're going to say is that 3a acting downwards equals uh, 3g going downwards minus t going upwards. And what about what's the other one in weight? 7 kilograms? Is it a rough surface or a smooth surface? Mm -hmm. Smooth, so no friction, okay? So for the 7 kilogram mass, it's going to be uh, 7a going to the left equals uh, tension pulling to the left and minus nothing right because there's no friction this time around now what's going to happen next is we replace the t with 7a so we're going to get 3a equals 3g minus 7a 10a equals 3g a equals 3 over 10 g everybody happy with that now how long does it take the three kilogram mass to reach the ground uh, U V A S T U V A S starts at zero. It has an acceleration of three over ten g. We'll turn that into uh, decimals, will we? Three tenths of uh, three multiplied over ten multiplied by nine point eight. Might as well do it that way. Anybody know? Uh, two point nine four. That's fair enough. S its distance, guys. Uh, 3.3075 and what we're looking to find out is how long did it take to reach the ground looking for T any ideas what to do here uh, you could do S equals UT plus a half AT squared can anybody think of a disadvantage there any disadvantages well, to be fair, the U is going to cancel it, isn't it? So we're just going to get the square root of an awkward number, but it's actually not too bad. If it was going to be a quadratic, you, I would have went the other way, two, two, two steps to get to the answer, but uh, this should work out okay. So S is 3.3075 equals a half of A. What's a half of our acceleration? 1.47? Let's go with 1.47 T squared. Divide this by 1.47. Four seven and then square root it. Divide it and square root it. Any takers? Two over two. One point five seconds. That's a very convenient number. Okay. Now, what happens next, guys, is the. Uh, what happens next is how much longer does it take the seven kilograms to reach the edge of the table? Because they're both connected, 
when this travels it's three meters uh, it's 3.3 meters downwards that also means that this uh, seven kilogram mass is 3.3075 closer to the edge of the table than it had been so what we're trying to get at here is that our original distance which is our 6.61 uh, take away our uh, 3.3075 i think one is exactly double the other so 3.3075 to go don't we now because the other one's on the ground what automatically happens then when the other one hits the ground what happens does tension still exist why does it not exist sorry yeah, its weight is no longer effective because it's uh, been supported from below. Okay, so t according to the rope, it's now weightless. Okay, means tension is gone, which means your UVAS system ha now has a new system. Oh, one thing we forgot there. Do you remember I got a? Uh, remember I got t equals 1.5 seconds. I should also find the velocity it hit the ground at, because the velocity it hit the ground at is also the velocity of the seven kilogram particle, just as the string goes slack because they're connected to each other. So you're gonna do is V equals U plus AT. T equals zero plus uh, 2.94 times 1.5, 2.94 times 1.5. Anybody thought? Four point? Four one. Four one. Yeah. Yep. So 4.4. You hit the ground at 4.41 seconds, and then you stop dead, dead in your tracks, okay? A little bit of a bounce, let's be honest about it, because it's reality, okay? But uh, the next part, guys, is your 4.41. It's now moving at 4.41, just as its acceleration goes zero. So your U-value is 4.41. Your uh, V-value... There's also going to be 4.4. Your A value is 0 and your S value is uh, is what is 3.30. This is linear motion. Distance over speed. Your 3.3075 divided by your 4.41. What will that get you? Yeah. So, it's how long does it take to get to the edge of the table, okay? Not looking at anybody in particular. So, uh, distance divided by s speed, guys. What's distance divided by speed? 3.4. Sorry? Uh, zero, or 0.75. 0.75. It takes another three quarters of a second, okay? Now, number 12. El Gigante of this section. A mass of m kilograms rests on a smooth horizontal table and is attached by two horizontal inelastic strings, m1 and m2, where m1 is the bigger one. We've seen this before. Shh. Guys, so we're going to make our table. Okay. So here's our table here. At the edge of the table, we're going to have our uh, our pulleys. Okay. One. Pulley two, and then we're going to get pulled off the edge by M1 and M2, respectively. Okay, so there we go. Should be more in contact. There we go. Now, so there's your two pulleys. Okay, now that we've done that, what we've got to do is we've got to attach the uh, weight onto it next. Okay, so the two weights are, it doesn't matter which one you put where. I suppose uh, we'll go with the acceleration going this way, so we'll put a uh, is M1 the bigger one? No, M1's bigger. So this is M1, which makes that M1G. We call that T going upwards and T pulling that to the right. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, T pulling that to the right, T going upwards. Okay. Now we have our other way over the other side, which is M. M goes down at MG, gets pulled up by tension S, and comes across uh, and sorry and the block in the middle is getting pulled back at tension s is the table smooth or rough smooth no friction okay next one capital m kg okay now a big problem with this is keeping track of all the m's now you might be forgiven for just 
picking three arbitrary letters like A, B, and C, and doing it with A, B, and C all the way to the very end, and then just saying like, uh, you could do it like this, like A equals M1, B equals M, C equals big M. And it means you aren't going to get your M's mixed up, which is really convenient if you want to go around doing it that way. I'll keep it fairly uh, bog standard though, I'll just keep it like this, okay? So, we're going to do first is the M mass, M kg. I'll do this in uh, I'll do this in purple actually. So what we're going to say is that S uh, M A going upwards, right? What do we say the acceleration is? M one being the bigger one, so it should be like that. Now M A going upwards equals S going upwards minus M G. Next we're going to migrate onto the M one mass. And then what we have here is that M A going, oh sorry, M one A going downwards equals uh, M one G going downwards minus your T going upwards. Then finally we're going to have the uh, M K G mass. And then what we're going to get is M A equals uh, what's it T minus S. Now, look at the combination above. No tensions whatsoever represented here, so we've got to get rid of all our tensions. So what we're going to do is what we usually do. I'm going to use the purple equation, isolate S, S equals uh, mg plus ma. I'm going to use the red equation and isolate T. T equals T to the left, m1a to the right, so m1g minus m1a. Using both of these equations, I'm now going to put them into the green equation, which is MA equals uh, M1G minus M1A uh, plus MG. Oh, sorry, it's a minus, isn't it? It's minus, so I'll minus both of them. Minus MG minus MA. A, there has to be only one A left at the end of the question. This means bring anything with an A with it to the left hand side and factorize till there's only one letter remaining. So we're going to get capital MA plus MA plus M1A equals uh, M1G minus MG. Take out your A and you're going to be left with M plus small M plus M1. I'm going to take out G over here as well while I'm at it. M1 minus M. Cross multiply down equals G into M1 minus M all over M plus, plus M1. And what I'm hoping is, is that is exactly the same thing as what's above. So find out now. There it is there. Let's see. Uh, sorry, it's a bit difficult there. Okay. The G is there, G is there, M1 minus M, M1 minus M, perfect, M1 plus M plus big M, M plus M1 plus big M, same thing.